Yes, yes, yes! And I'm calling it the Nuggery Game! Appendix Audition! Now watch, I bet when you betray her, she doesn't get up in time. Betray! Or maybe she does, I don't know. Listen. Why? What happened to... It's not fair to betray someone who isn't voting. I thought... There was nothing I could think of to say. Even I didn't really understand why I'd pick betray instead. It just almost felt unconscious. Like some other part of my mind was making the decision. Perhaps I'd been possessed by some sort of evil spirit that had moved my finger to the betray button against my will? <laughs> Right, well, we should go see the results. We already know what they are. It's just simple math. The look in her eyes was more painful than any punch I'd ever taken. I turned away and almost ran toward the projector, anything to get away from those eyes. Results, please. Oh, I thought maybe they'd stick Alice's on there. Trip tray. Tray, 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 tray. Points have been assigned or subtracted, please. We should have stuck it out. What? It was impossible. I blinked, rubbed my eyes, and looked again. No, how can Alice's vote be betrayed? That's not possible. A Alice. She was standing inside the second room from the left. The room that should have been empty. Why? My mind was still reeling. Where had she come from? As I was trying to form a sentence, she began to move towards us. From around me, I heard a chorus of muted gasps. It seemed we were united in our surprise and confusion. Alice drew a stop in front of me and glanced up at the display. Thought you'd get an easy couple points, huh? Not so easy when you have to look your victim in the eye, is it? Coward. <laughs> me? A coward? You got some balls saying that to me after you picked Betray. Why are you even here? You gave me the antivirus, didn't you? Ten Miyoji told me. Thank you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart, honestly. But you should still be under the effects of the anesthetic. Yes, well, I still am. A bit. I have a throbbing headache, and I can barely stand. It's horrible. I'm more resistant to anesthetics than most people. A result of my training. I have a feeling Zero Senior knew that. They gave me way more than the standard dose of that gas when they kidnapped me. In any event, a few minutes ago I woke up in the infirmary. Ten Miyoji explained what was going on and I got here as fast as I could. So you showed up right after we'd gone into the AB room? Yes, right in the nick of time. About ten seconds before the deadline, as I recall. You did that just so you could betray us? Right. What? Don't I get to do that? I mean, it turned out to be the right thing to do, didn't it? You two chose Betray. If I'd stayed back there, I'd have lost two points. So you're saying it was self-defense? Yes. You're full of shit. Self-defense, my ass. You chose Betray because you wanted out. You had six PP. If you if I picked Ally, you'd had nine. That's what you were trying to do, so right? what if I was? Are you serious? You would have killed me. Look, I only have one BP. You were this close to murdering me. Just a minute. You were planning to kill me so you could escape. Don't be stupid. I knew you'd choose Betray. There was... Tell the truth. That is the truth. Why am I the only one getting the third degree here? Look at those results. Two other people just tried to kill someone. Fi and Dio. Yes. If Dio had chosen Ally, Fi would have killed Ten Miyoji. And if she'd chosen Ally, Dio would have killed her. I don't want to be rude, but it looks like Clover and Kay tried to trick one another, not that it seems to have worked. If either one had chosen Ally, the other one would have 9 BP right now. I turned to look at the results again, before I'd only been looking at my own. I hadn't realized there was only one word all across the roster. Betray. Whatever trust had managed to build had fallen apart. Everyone was suspicious of everyone else. Had it been the bombs? Or had it been something else? 
Whatever the reason, if it kept up, we'd never manage to escape. We'd be trapped in a cycle of zero point rounds for the rest of our lives. Something had to be done. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. Alright guys, pay attention. We'll probably all figure this out, but we can't keep going like this. If we don't start being a little more trusting, we're never going to get out of here. We have to work together. Might as well have been talking to a wall. My apologies, Sigma, but I need to think on something for a bit. I would appreciate being left alone. Okay. I'll be leaving too. Things are getting a little too intense here for my delicate constitution. Sorry. Theo. Well, in that case. A25? Yeah. Sorry. Without another word, she turned and left the warehouse. Theo and Kay quickly followed suit. See? There's your answer. In the end, everyone's just thinking about themselves. So I would appreciate it if you could not treat me like I'm the only villain here. Come on, Clover. Hold on! I'm coming! Are you feeling okay? I was really worried, you know? I watched them walk away, Clover practically jumping with delight to have Alice back. Before long, I reached the yellow door and disappeared beyond it. Everyone's gone. You aren't gonna leave too? No. You sure? I chose Betray. I know, but I still believe in you, Sigma. I think your hand must have just slipped or something, right? My chest hurt and I blinked. I felt something hot and wet prick the corner of my eyes. Luna, I... bit my lip. Before I could think of anything to say, the metallic rumble of the doors closing echoed through the warehouse. The Ambidex gates have closed. Round three of the Ambidex game will start oh, yeah, star the... Round. <laughs> Many times we won, huh? Yes, as long as we have the star keys, that means we can keep playing the AB game over and over too. Um, Sigma, could you show me your bracelet? Do you remember what Zero Junior said? Pear. Yeah, I remember. Oh, let's see here. I'm a cyan pear. What about you? I'm a magenta pear. I wonder what the others are. Could be anything. We won't know until we have a look. Hmm. We've got about 80 minutes until the next set of doors open. So what should we do now? Everyone else has gone off on their own. Yeah, physically and emotionally. I really don't like how this is going. It won't matter how many times we repeat the AB game if nobody trusts anybody else. We'll never be able to get out of here. Maybe it would help if we all had a common goal. Something to unite our hearts and minds. <laughs> Yeah, but we've already got something like that. We all want to get out of here. That seems like a pretty clear goal to me, but everybody chose Betray. Including me. Well, what if we have an enemy? An yes, enemy? Yes, a common foe. Like the person who set the bombs, for instance. After coming back from the lab, I told her about the bomb while she gave Alice and Quirk the accelerator. Yeah, that might work. If we can figure out which one of us planted those bombs. And everyone else work together against right. them. But how do we figure out who that is? Um, do you have any clues? Uh, hmm, clues, huh? That's right, the memory card. I pulled it out of my pocket and held it out towards her. What's this? I told you, a memory card. It was under the bomb we found in the lab. I think whoever set the bomb dropped really? it. Really? Yeah, I don't know what's on it though. We couldn't find any kind of memory card either. Oh, I guess we can't really use it then. Wait a second. You know what? I think I might have seen something. Yes, I remember. The infirmary. I saw it when I was searching the infirmary with Dio and Quark. There was a memory card just like that one. Yes, I think we can. The computer there should be able to read it. Luna and I explored and exploded into the infirmary, nearly running into Alice, Clover, and Tenyoji. Mark was there as well, of course, but he was just as we left him, asleep on the bed. What are you doing here? I opened my mouth to retort, then thought better of it. I really wanted people to start trusting each other. Well, real change starts at home. As quickly as I could, I explained the second bomb and the memory card and how we'd come to the infirmary in hopes of discovering the contents of the latter. Okay. Then stick it in already! Go ahead. <laughs> Somebody uh, isolate the clip of Clover telling me to stick it in already and just upload a video that's just a loop of that, please. That would be fantastic. 
Just as Luna had said, there was a small slot under the screen exactly the right size to fit a memory card. Within moments, the screen was filled with what appeared to be random letters. What is this? Hmm. Six rows, 22 letters each. It looks like the odd rows use one set of letters, and the even rows use another set. In other words, the first two rows just repeat. Yeah. Is this some kind of code or something? It doesn't look random to me. I think there might be a pattern. I just don't know what it is. Was there anything else on there? No, it doesn't look like it. So all we get is this gibberish. Hey Alice, you haven't said anything for a while. What's Does up? any of this look familiar to you, Clover? Um, what do you mean? Have you seen something like this before? Maybe during your training? Uh, this is... So you do recognize it. Alright, knock it off, you two. How about you share it with the rest of the class? Alice sighed and stretched her neck from side to side. I believe this is an encoded message from a terrorist organization. What? They call themselves the Myrmidons. Myrmidons. For some reason I felt like I'd heard that name before. What are the Myrmidons? Put simply, they're a bunch of thugs who are trying to destroy or dismantle most of human civilization. So this thing we're looking at, you think it's theirs? Well, they have a number of different codes, but I do think this is one of them. Then the bomb? It was set by one of the Myrmidons, wasn't it? Yes. Well, I can't say for sure, of course, but it seems likely. Why would the Myrmidons have a knife with their fucking name engraved on it? That's ridiculous. I've got a ton of questions for you, but let me start with this one. What the heck does that thing say? I don't know. How am I supposed to decode it? I don't have the key. Without a key, it would take literally hundreds of years to decode. What about you, Clover? Well, if Alice doesn't know how, I sure don't. I see. Hmm. Not much we can do then. I can come back with that code stuff later. I've got another question. Alice, Clover, who the hell are you? Why do you know about this code? That's... You told me your job was to eliminate enemies of the state or something like that. So what the hell kind of a job is that? I think it's time you told us what you do. Sorry, but I can't. Why not? Because you might be one of them. You might be the person who set the bomb. That's idiotic. Of course I'm really? not. And where's your proof? For all I know, you're my enemy. I can't tell you anything. I'm not your enemy. I'm your ally. I'm your friend. I just want us all to get out of here. Just please tell us. Please. We need to find out who did this so we can all escape. But we have too little information. We need your help. Fine. If you won't tell us about yourself, then just tell us about the Myrmidons. What else do you know about them? I'm sorry. Before I could blink, she leapt up and ran out of the room. Hey, wait, Alice. I took off after her. How long are you going to keep following me? Until you tell me what you know? Then why don't you just ask Clover? Clover? You already know she works with me. Well, yeah. Then why don't you... I wanted to hear from you. Why? That's a good question. Remember the crew quarters? Or this garden? We got paired up for two separate rounds. That means I've spent more time with you than anybody else here. Maybe that's it. I guess I'm just curious about you. What are you talking about? She spun around to hide it, but I got a blush of red on her cheeks. We walked down the path to where it ended next to the pond. Why is the waterfall going again? All the holes are dug up, but the waterfall is still going. Aw, oh, you blew it, guys. Uchikochi, you messed everything up. I have a feeling he probably wasn't involved in making sure that the rooms looked completed when you went back to him, but... I stayed silent. Alice sat down on the bench, gazed at the smooth surface of the pond for several long minutes before she began to speak. You don't hate me? What? Why? I tried to kill you. You mean in the AB game? Yes. I was so scared. Who wouldn't be? Kidnapped and locked up, forced to play some sort of bizarre game, and then we found that bomb. I know I probably sounded calm, but as soon as we found that thing, all I wanted to do was run away from it as fast as I could. Things just went downhill from there. What do you mean? I remember hearing that Quark had collapsed and running to the infirmary with everyone else. When I got there, I realized I couldn't understand what anyone was saying. And everything looked... I don't know how to describe it. It was like watching a video on Fast Forward, only it was real. Then I started to feel like... It's hard to explain. I guess you could say I didn't feel like I was myself, and it only got worse. 
It was probably the Radical yes, Six. I think so. I don't remember much after that, but when I woke up in the infirmary, suddenly all that fear was back. So I... All I could think about was getting out of this place as fast as I could. It never even crossed my mind that it could kill you. God help me, it, even if it had, I don't think I would have cared. See? I'm horrible. You hate me, don't you? Just do it! What? Do kill what? Me. Get it over with! What the hell, Alice? I'm not gonna kill you. I don't even hate You're you. You're lying! I could have killed you. I would have killed you. Come on, calm down. No one's killing anyone. A single tear rolled down Alice's cheek. Then another, and another, leaving shining lines across her face. When I reached out, I saw her tense just slightly. Slowly, I brushed my thumb across her cheek and off, taking her tears with it. Why are you doing this? You know, you kind of remind me of my father. That's who you were after, right? The people who killed your dad? Yes. Did they have anything to do with the Myrmidons? Will you promise not to tell Clover that I cried? <laughs> Come on. If you keep your mouth shut, I just know she's speaking. You, you, you keep your mouth shut, I'll tell you what you want. Oh, about that was her line. Oops. My and bad. about the Miradons. Sure, my lips are Read. sealed. We're crying. I don't remember any crying. Good. Alright then. Alice took a deep breath and began. I have to read the Alice. Fuck. Oh, I can't do an Alice voice. I, I can't do an Alice voice. I'm not good at an Alice voice. My father is Egyptian, but my mother is French. They met while my mother was in Egypt on vacation and married shortly thereafter. When I was three, we all moved to the US. My father was a scientist, and his field was cloning. He was recruited by an American lab, which is why we moved. Both of my parents used English around me from the time I was born, so I didn't have any problems adapting to life in the US. By my ninth birthday, we'd been there for six years. That was when it happened. In the middle of the day, my mother showed up at school. Her eyes were red and puffy, but she didn't say anything to me on the drive home. When we arrived, there were several policemen there to meet us. My father had always been a very punctual man, and when dinner time came and went with no sign of him, even I began to realize something terrible had happened. It wasn't until several years later that I finally learned the truth. My father's lab had been attacked by terrorists, and he had been kidnapped. For the rest of my childhood, my mother raised me by herself. I didn't realize it then, but it must have been incredibly difficult for her. With a single mother alone in a country where any relatives were a transatlantic flight away, she did her best not to let me see it, but every so often when she thought she was alone, the mask would fall away and in every line of her face I could see exhaustion and loneliness. As much as I missed my father, it was those moments that made me wish more than anything that he'd never been taken. Fortunately, I was an excellent student and did especially well in math. I earned a full ride scholarship straight out of high school and spent the next several years studying. After graduation, I took a job with the Department of Defense, hoping that they might have the resources to help me look for my father. I was immediately assigned to the Special Office of Internal Security. Their purpose is to investigate and sometimes deal with terrorist organizations and other serious threats to the state. I could tell my mother wasn't happy about my decision, but she chose to remain silent about it. Eventually, I learned that the terrorist organization that had taken my father was none other than the Myrmidons, although at the time that name didn't mean anything to me. They were suspected of human cloning, specifically it was thought that they had been using cloning techniques to copy their most useful members and expand their ranks. The Myrmidons apparently believed that they could use cloning to create a new race of humans. Now, at last, I knew the reason for my father's abduction. The commander of the Myrmidons is a man named Left. We know his name and his gender, but not his appearance or his age. The Myrmidons are closely associated with a cult known as Free the Soul. We believe that Free the Soul provides their funding, but trying to pin any kind of misdeeds on the cult's leader, a man named Brother, is like trying to nail Jello to a wall. Brother is supposed to be fairly advanced in years, and rumors say that he's so old he can't even get out of bed. Unfortunately, his mind seems to be as sharp as ever. At that point, I hit a wall. I knew the Myrmidons had been behind my father's kidnapping, but that was all I could learn about them. Then one day, I got a tip that some of them were hiding in a building in the Nevada desert. I headed out immediately. On the way there, my car had some engine trouble and stalled out. I was trying to decide what to do when an SUV appeared out of nowhere. I'll give you one guess who was behind the steering wheel. Clover. That was the first time we met. There were four other people in the car with her, and when I asked them what they were doing, I got what was just about the last answer I'd expected. They told me they'd been locked up inside the very building I'd been on my way to investigate, and that they were currently in pursuit of the people who had kidnapped them in the first place. My priorities shifted very quickly. After a short discussion, I convinced them to allow me to come along. My hope was to find the people they were chasing, who I was certain were Myrmidons. In the end, however, we weren't able to track them down. In fact, I still don't know where they might have gone. 
Eventually, I took Clover and her companions to SOIS headquarters. We decided that involving the police would only complicate things. After some questioning, it was determined that the people who had instigated this particular event were not connected to the Myrmidons. We did, however, discover the mysterious disappearance and subsequent reappearance of several children nine years prior, prior was connected to Free the Soul. There was also a sixth person in the SUV, although they weren't riding in it per se. A middle-aged man, who I'll just call each for now, had been bound and placed in the trunk. According to the other four, he had been behind the disappearance of the children nine years earlier. We also learned that his pharmaceutical company, a major player on the world stage, was effectively controlled by Free the Soul. More specifically, I suppose, each was a member of Free the Soul and very committed to their cause. So why had he kidnapped all those children? Apparently he had been part of an experiment designed to test the ability of certain people to access what's called the morphogenetic field. I don't imagine you've ever heard of it before, so I'll try and give you a quick rundown. Simply put, these people can access a sort of field that allows their consciousness to resonate with the consciousness of certain other people. To be honest, it might be simpler to just call it telepathy. The SOIS had heard of this particular ability before, and had actually used it in a number of investigations, so I was surprised to learn of its existence. I was shocked, however, to learn that these experiments had been carried out by a member of Free the Soul. If that was the case, the brother must have known about it. The thought of him discovering a way to control and harness that power was terrifying. It wasn't too long after the incident in Nevada that another tip about the Myrmidons crossed my desk. This time it claimed that the Myrmidons intended to launch a large-scale biological terrorist attack. The bosses decided that we needed more agents to deal with the threat of that magnitude, and magnitude, and Clover was recruited. Because she'd been a test subject in each experiment, we knew she had the ability to access the morphogenic field, we wanted to put that ability to use. After several months of test training, she went sent on her first mission. She'd be tasked with the infiltration and investigation of a Myrmidon cloning lab. I was assigned to be her commanding officer. I hoped our investigation might also give me a lead on my father's whereabouts. At last, I had a chance to find out what happened to him. I wouldn't let that chance pass me by. Perhaps that was the, what kept me from noticing the truth. The whole operation was a trap. The lab was fake and Clover was captured almost immediately. I got there as fast as I could, but when I arrived the building was only an empty shell. All of the conspirators who had pretended to be researchers and the like had already fled. I searched frantically for Clover until at last in a basement room I found her. She had been tied to a chair, but on the floor next to her was another body. It was my father. He looked as if he'd just been dumped there, and when I got to him, his body was already cold. He was covered in dark, ugly bruises. It wasn't until later that I learned he had died from ruptured organs and internal bleeding. They had beaten him to death. As soon as Clover had been captured, a Myrmidon in a mask had come to visit her. He said unless she wanted to end up like my father, she would leave them alone and tell her masters at the SOIS to do likewise. In retrospect, they must have known who I was and who my father was. That was why they killed him. Perhaps they thought they were sending a message to me. Or that once he was gone, I'd lose my reason for chasing them. They were very, very wrong. I took Clover with me and left. I tried to console myself with the fact that I had, at least, been able to save her. Sometime later, I received a call from the coroner. He told me there was something I needed to see. There in the morgue was my father, cold and pale on a steel table. I could barely stand to look at him, but the coroner insisted. On his arm were two rows of numbers, comprised of eights and nines. It took me a moment to recognize my father's handwriting. He had carved them into his own skin. On his chest was another message, but they were letters this time, not numbers. Not many, just enough to make a short sentence. I love you, Alice. I broke down crying right there in the morgue. They were the first tears I'd shed since the operation started and there was no stopping them. There would be no forgiveness. Not for the monsters who put my father through this. They destroyed my family. I would make them pay even if I had to die to do it. That night I made a promise to myself. I would avenge my father. It didn't take long to figure out that the numbers he'd hid, or he'd written, were latitude and longitude. They pointed to a chemical factory that had been disguised in an abandoned building. Further investigation revealed that it was the mother load we'd been looking for at the headquarters of the Myrmidons. I think my father must have known how things would turn out. Knowing he was going to die, he'd written the directions to our enemy's fortress on his own body. He'd sacrificed too much for me to waste this opportunity with recklessness. This time our operation would succeed. This time I wouldn't let my excitement put Clover or any other of my other agents in danger. So we took our time, we gathered information, we did our research, and we planned. Finally, we were ready. December 25th, 2028 was going to be the day we finally set foot inside the Myrmidon stronghold. But then on the 22nd, only three days before the operation was scheduled to begin, a man in a gas mask appeared. 